where someone asked what I currently earn. It's often a base salary that you get just for being an actuarial graduate. In addition to your annual leave, you actually get study days that are paid and you can get up to 40 days. In Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ben and I'm an actuarial analyst working in the general insurance reserving space. In today's video, I'm actually going to be looking at a topic inspired by a subscriber question where someone asked what I currently earn. So I'm actually not going to go into detail about exactly what I earn because that's not appropriate, but I thought it would be a good idea to give people an expectation of what they could earn from having an actuarial science degree. I actually think that the question was also inspired by the common saying that the actuarial field is very well paid. Something to definitely keep in mind from the get-go is that the actuarial package is not something that's universal across different countries and different companies. Although most companies tend to follow certain broad principles that are the same. What I mean by that is that there's often a base salary that you get just for being an actuarial graduate even if you have no exams or uh, experience. At that point, your very first employer might choose to pay for your exemptions from university if you have any, so that they're recognized by your professional body. They might choose to pay for your professional membership with the professional body and a host of other things. If you're an experienced hire who's not yet a qualified actuary or an associate, then the number of exams you have are going to be factored into a formula to determine how much you should earn based on the number of exams that you have. At the same time, the number of years of experience that you have are also factored into this salary formula. Something that I mentioned briefly that's actually a major part of actuarial remuneration and the actuarial package, as it were, is actuarial exam sponsorship. So normally companies will pay for your exam registration fees, they will pay for your study material, they will pay for a few extra things like maybe flashcards. I'll make a separate more in-depth video of how actuarial sponsorship generally works but just to keep in mind that's a major part of your actuarial remuneration. Another major part of actuarial remuneration is paid time off. Now everybody gets paid time off but in addition to your annual leave you actually get study days that are paid and you can get up to 40 days in some settings, just depending on the combination of exams that you're writing and the number of times that you're sitting exams in a particular year. A really awesome feature of actuarial salaries is that they go up each time that you pass an exam. So each exam has a pre-specified amount by which your salary will increase. And with achievements like becoming an associate or becoming a fellow, there's usually a once-off bonus that's associated with that and who doesn't have bonuses. I think one other thing that's generally important to mention about actuarial remuneration is when you move from one employer to another, most employers tend to take on your study debt from your previous employer because there's usually a clause with all these good things that they're giving you, which is if you leave before a certain period elapses, after they've paid money for your exam or for your membership or something of that sort, then you owe them money and you need to pay back. I did mention earlier that I cannot disclose information relating to my personal salary, but I tried to look for information based on averages for you guys, and even that is hard to find. What I did find is an article titled Average Actuarial Scientist Salary 2022. The numbers in the article actually make sense to me based on all the information that I was seeing during the time that I was looking for a job, and I think they're a good base for you to see what you could earn having graduated having a few years of experience but then just keep in mind that that is not literally based on just the number of experience it's a combination of the number of exams and experience and just the employer's generosity and things like that and all that information is averaged to give us a number I hope that any prospective actuarial students found this article useful and that you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!